We're glad to know that you're still there. It's still the run up and this is the final lap of the journey this uh, today. And um, we, before now, we were talking with uh, Badebo Road Survivor, who is the governorship candidate for Labour Party in Lagos State. And he was uh, giving us some, some points, you know, how Lagos can be better and how the youths can take the reins of leadership and what needs to be done and so many other things. And we got so, so many things that uh, we could have still asked him or could have still discussed, but we ran out of time, as it were. Uh, Bayo, are you still there and um, listening? Yes. Yeah. Of course, yes. I'm okay, there. so, so uh, it was, for me, it was a very good eye-opener from uh, Badebo there talking with us. Uh, I don't know what you, the, your take-out points are from the whole discussion with uh, the governorship candidate. Uh, well, he was, um, from my impression is that he is um, uh, quite aware of, you know, the, the opportunities uh, as well as the challenges, you know, uh, that Lagos presents. And um, he made some interesting comments on how he sees Lagos moving forward and, you know, especially in terms of uh, improving the infrastructural uh, capacity of the state, delivering a mass movement transportation, for example, the, the, the blue and, and red lines which the current administration uh, is about to commission, he had some other views on, on how to deliver such projects much more quickly and, and how to expand them to the nooks and crannies, but I was I was quite uh, in, intrigued and interested, you know, when he mentioned uh, integrating Ekwe Badagri and Ekorodu into the Greater Lagos, because one of the challenges, you know, of uh, every one of us in Lagos, one of the challenges we face, uh, which I'm sure that even the, the the government of Lagos has been been confronted with, is actually how to manage this stupendous population of Lagos, you know, um, and how it's, it's both an advantage, this huge population, and it can also be a disadvantage if it is not properly harnessed. So it was interesting to hear him articulating how, uh, if he became governor, he would like to further provide opportunities for that massive population, and then to bring a uh, Badagra and Kurudu into the mix of things, so to speak, so that when you want to, for example, set up a factory, you are not only thinking of Isolo or thinking of Agbara or thinking of uh, Ota Axis. You, you can think of going to Badagri to set up a factory or going to Ekwe to set up a factory as long as the infrastructure exists. Uh, the only thing I would, I would add to this would be it would be interesting to hear what other candidates for the, you know, for yeah. governorship position okay. have to say. And I, and I hope that since on Plus TV we are given an opportunity to candidates to come and interact and, and explain themselves, uh, we will not have candidates dodging, <laughs> dodging <laughs> such opportunity. But they will take it and come and, and actually uh, engage and, and, and articulate their plans. Yeah, I'm hoping they will be brave enough. Other candidates will be brave enough to come around and talk to us how they can make our society better. But uh, back home to us, just your personal opinion. Um, there is also a problem, for instance, the congestions that we're talking about that also translate into what we see on the roads as a uh, hold up everywhere, traffic uh, everywhere. Uh, a percentage of this, what we suffer, I mean, on the roads and everywhere is because of the the reasoning, the thinking of the average Lagosian, sometimes it's not because the road is not there, but it's just because of maybe impatience, maybe a little fight has, ensued, has broken out somewhere uh, between two drivers and all that. What do you think we, or can be done, not, not just we, what do you think can be done to make sure 
this small percentage that can be attributed to just the reasoning of the people can be corrected. In, because there is this now Lagos with this syndrome that we go through every day. People just feel mm -hmm. if you are in Lagos, there's a certain way you have to behave so that people don't see you as not being smart enough and all that. How can we change that? It's worrisome for me as a person. It's, it's really worrisome. And um, uh, whether we like it or not, you know, the, the government has a role to play. Uh, and this is where it's interesting because, I mean, like I said, to hear, hopefully we'll get Governor Songolo himself to come on, on the runoff, uh, you know, uh, to, to, because the government has a role to play. So the candidates have to tell us. But more importantly, and uh, like I alluded to, our orientation has to change. Our orientation has to change. Some, I don't know if it was last year, um, I, I actually saw a video of the governor of Lagos, somewhere in Lagos, I, I can't remember exactly where, and there, was, there were some vehicles driving against traffic, and he came out of his car. You know, and interestingly, he was actually even discussing with them to say, what you're doing is wrong. And there was a lady who said to him, this is not what you should be talking about. You should be talk this you should be making sure this traffic is not there in the first place. You see, two completely different things, right? He was trying to let them understand that it is wrong to drive against traffic. And the other lady was vehement in her position. In other words, indirectly insisting that there was actually nothing wrong in people driving against traffic because they had to get to wherever they were going on time. But what was important was for the government to make sure that the traffic jam was not there. I mean, we've been to many countries. It's not all the time. You, despite your best efforts, you might still have traffic jam, either because of an accident, because of people misbehaving on the way, and so on and so forth. And I'm not holding brief. But it just speaks to our orientation. People respecting traffic rules, obeying traffic rules, don't, not stopping in the middle of the road to greet their friends. I mean, there are some really absurd things that have I have witnessed yeah. in Lagos stopping when the green light when in the, the middle of the road, you know. Sorry, I say stopping to carry someone in the middle of the road, especially the yellow yes. buses and all that. So uh, yes, and then and then I found somebody. We were in traffic. He didn't make any move until the traffic light changed to green, and then he stops to buy plantains. <laughs> I see. And he, he he was not apologetic. He. You could see this guy was a well-to-do person. So it wasn't as if it was, you know, educated, well-to-do person. So it tells you that this misbehavior is not a function of class or social strata. It permeates all. Yeah. All, 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 all social strata. So well, our well, I'm, I'm just wondering, I'm wondering, who should drive this cause? Who is it that should be at the fore when we're fighting to change the psyche, to change the orientation of the people? Who should, who should carry that? I think um, uh, platforms where we have a, a mass aggregation of people. Okay, I'm using, I'm using that expression, guardedly. Platforms where we have a mass aggregation of people. In other words, it could be a social media platform. I think we need to remind ourselves, whether you're on Facebook, you have a large followers, large grouping, WhatsApp grouping. We need to just keep reminding ourselves as we, you know, when you send the message, say, stay safe, everybody, keep safe. We should also be saying, respect traffic rules. Churches, mosques, uh, anywhere you have an, an, an aggregation of people. Because it's absolutely important. Uh, because you're right. Some of these bottlenecks are created by the indiscretion of road users, not to even talk of the commercial vehicles, the agrarians, who just jump in the middle of the road. And then you have people who refuse to use the pedestrian bridges. On the one hand, they criticize government for not giving them infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Then in those situations where government actually now delivers infrastructure, spends millions to put foot bridges there, they don't use it. They cross right under the foot bridges and they cause traffic jam. Okay, well, <clears throat> we, we did, we did um, uh, say earlier when we started the show uh, something about NNPC uh, <coughs> saying that depots do not work. According to the uh, IPMAND, the president uh, said uh, Nigeria is not doing enough to reduce population growth. And that is from NPC, Population uh, <laughs> Council. 
Uh, this day is saying 90% of diehard Boko Haram fighters are dead. That's by the government. That's the declaration of the government. On, from Daily Post, we hear that ASU, fresh protests rock universities as federal government remains adamant. That's no work, no pay, I'm sure. 2023, mm -hmm. Namdi Kanu's release will boost APC's chances in Southeast. That is from Adeonju. I'm sure it's Deji Adeonju. Um, <laughs> Am Aminu Adamu, Aisha Buhari deactivates Twitter account, injury worsens. You remember the young man who criticized uh, the wife of the president, and then he was arrested and locked up, and Twitter went agog. Everybody was talking about it. Some blamed her, and expectedly, some were in support of what she did. The young man criticized the uh, wife of the president, and that happened to him. I don't know which of these ones touched, touched you, Bayer. From well, the everything. From the Asu, Ev from the <laughs> yeah, to everyone, which one touched uh, you more? <laughs> everything. First of all, the, um, the um, comments that the a few depots of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, if I got the name correctly, I know they changed their names, yeah. I, I hope I got the name correctly, mm. that the depots are not working. Um, frankly, I'm wondering what that is supposed to mean, because depots, we, we have, if, if my memory serves me right, we have like 22 depots, we have in Ejiko, we have in Makoti, we have in... Uh, the most semi in 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 in, in Ogun State. We have them all over the country. But these were depots built to take stock from the refineries and cross trans transfer them across the country. But we know that our refineries have not been working, so we have been importing. So which depots are they talking about? The the, the depots by the NNPC will to me not may not be relevant. I stand to be corrected. May not be relevant in this case because we are importing. So it's actually the marketers who have a few storage depots at strategic places, usually close to the ports, you know, where, this, uh, where these things are piped. So um, I really, I was at a loss what this gentleman was actually referring to, considering the fact that we are importing. Uh, if the Dangote refinery comes on, on stream, then we may need to be looking at those NNPC refiner uh, depots across the country, whether they actually are integrated or will be integrated to the Dangote refinery, which would be fantastic because it will reduce the trucks on the highways. But that's a different thing completely. So if we're importing, I don't see how the 22 depots across the country that are supposed to be fed by the four refineries that are not working have a role to play now in us not having fuel. Yeah. That's one. Um, the the question of um, uh, the gentleman whose uh, account was was the act, uh, who, who was allegedly uh, picked up because he criticized allegedly criticized the the wife of the president. Um, I think that to to eradicate confusion as to exactly what happened, what didn't happen. You see, the command and control structure of the security forces has to be, has to conform to what is on ground. You know, uh, I'm not just now, I'm not specifically referring to the first lady, and because we've seen many instances where security forces are allocated to public functionaries, you know, and then you begin to wonder exactly as to who gives orders to them. And what kind of orders can be given to them? If I am given a police officer as an as my orderly, this police officer should have, you know, functions specific to his or have been my orderly. Okay, yeah, would I have the power I'm not, to? I'm not sure that happens here because I've seen orderlies carrying handbags, even male orderlies carrying handbags to their <laughs> madams, and then taking yeah. food from. A, a buffet to go and give to yeah. the madam sitting at table. Exactly, exactly. And that's and, and that's on the lighter side. But you are making a very valid point. You know, it starts getting much more worrisome and embarrassing, mm -hmm. you know, and potentially illegal if now I can ask my orderly to go and pick up somebody who is owing me money. Mm. What I am supposed to do is to go and report at the police station if somebody is owing me money. And not to say because I have an orderly attached to me by the IGP 
or by the commissioner of police, I now ask that body to go and pick up somebody who is owing me money and go and lock the person up. So, and, and I think if we don't address this kind, if we don't really streamline the command and control and make very clear what the functions of these officers are, then we are going to be susceptible to these kinds of allegations that have come, that is being denied, that is not being confirmed, that we don't know exactly what has happened, you know, as to whether it's actually true. But what is not contro controvertible is that the young man was picked up. Who picked up this young man? Where did they take him to? Under whose orders? Mm -hmm. Now that is something in the air with all kinds of dimensions coming into that. Yeah, I believe so. Because even though everybody points fingers at the First Lady, maybe she's not uh, the person who sent. But today, we still do not know who ordered the shooting for uh, during NSAS. So we may never find out. All we need to know, <laughs> all we need to know is that, okay, on the one hand, uh, it is bad for people who are in authority to use their authority that has been given to them by the people to oppress people. But on the other hand as well, we need to be guarded. It doesn't mean that because we are given a freedom of speech, we can say anything and expect to go scot-free. Uh, because uh, you might enter into the hands of people who may not take it as kindly as some others with you. So... Let's share the blame. Let the blame go around. We be careful and the other people be humble enough to take criticism sometimes when it comes. Bayo, a final word before we just draw the curtain to Nigerians and everybody else. The final word, of course, would always be that your vote counts. Don't let anyone tell you that your vote doesn't count. And don't let anybody tell you that, you know, your voting will not make a difference. Your voting will make a big difference. This is why you must vote and make sure you get your PVC, keep it properly, and use it on the day of the election. Mm. Thank you very much, Bayo. Okay, from me to you, know that if you are uh, a Nigerian that is going to vote, know that you should start seeing yourself as an employer of labor. And so whatever you need to demand for whoever you, is asking for your appointment letter must be done. If he doesn't pass it, he stays. The one who passes it, the exams, I mean, gets to sit where he needs to sit. So you are an employer of labor, and like Bayo said, your vote will count. Make sure you feel and behave like the, some, like the person who is employing somebody else. If you know what I mean, fine. If you don't get it, forget about it, <laughs> as they say in, in today's uh, streets. Okay, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. It's been a pleasure having you uh, with us on the show. Let's do it again tomorrow. Bye for now.